Hey guys, welcome to Safi Maxed. As we all know, Stedling approximation is a key concept in solving different physical models and statistical mechanics. In this video, I will provide an explicit mathematical proof to the two different forms of Stedling approximation. The forms like these two. In statistical mechanics, we deal with distribution of particles in different available microstates. And such distribution involves the coefficient of binomial distributions, which take the form of n factorial. M, in this case, refers to the number of particles. In thermodynamical system, this n is usually very large, of the order of 10 raised to the power 24. R, just saying of the order of Avogadro number. Therefore, calculating n factorial for very large numbers is a difficult task. Fortunately, there exists an easy approximation to tackle this problem analytically, and that easy approach is named as Stirling approximation. We know from our video on gamma function that n factorial can be expressed in the form of this integral. Where, from thermodynamical point of view, the x could be any thermodynamical variable. Okay, let us first look at the behavior of the two terms in the integral. The first term that is x raised to the power n is a steeply increasing function of n. We can observe the behavior of this term by plotting it against n as shown in this figure. Whereas the exponent term that is exponent minus x is a decreasing function of x. Due to this twofold behavior of the integrand for a given n, the integrand becomes maximum for certain value of x, which we call as x equal x naught. To see this behavior, let us plot it against x for n equals 100. We see that it falls very sharply as x deviates from x equal to x naught, and similarly, it can be shown that the maximum become sharper with the increasing value of n. And we see that the value at the maximum is very large. The extremely large value at the maximum and the sharp falling at either side of the maximum suggest that we can approximate the total value of the integrand to its maximum value. This concept is the secret behind the Stirling approximation. So what in fact we need to do is to find the value of x at which the integrand becomes maximum. To this end, we first take the logarithm of the integrand by first writing it in the form of a function g sub n of x equals x power n times exponent minus x. And if we take the logarithm, on both sides, we can write it into this form. And applying the product formula of logarithm on the right side, it can be split into two logarithm that is in the form of log of x raised to power, log of x raised to the power n plus log of the exponent minus x. Now taking the power in each term to the coefficient, the equation takes the form log of g equals n times log of x minus x times log of e. Since log of e equals 1, therefore we can put the relation into this final form. Now differentiating equation 2 with respect to x, we can write the result as the derivative of the log of g with respect to x equals the, the derivative with respect to x of n times log of x minus x. And implying the derivative, we can put it into this form as n is independent of x 
and the derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of log of x is 1 over x so we can write the result as n divided by x minus 1. This equation is maximum when the derivative is 0 that is we can write the derivative of d which is equal to n divided by x minus 1 equals 0 when this condition is satisfied the equation is maximum and solving this equation we can write the result as n minus x equals 0. This result shows that the logarithm of the function g maximizes for n equals x. This suggests that the integral can be approximated by expanding the integrand and power series in the vicinity of xi equals x minus n very very small than 1. Because as obvious from the plot, the highest value of the integrand corresponds to this region of the parameters. Since the logarithm of the function is smoothly varying function as shown in the figure, therefore instead of the function itself, we expand the logarithm of the function in the vicinity of xi equals x minus n very very small than 1. So setting x is equal to xi plus n in equation 2 we can write the logarithm of the function into this form. Okay first manipulating the argument of the logarithm and writing it in the form n times 1 plus xi divided by n and then applying the product formula of logarithm we can split the first term into two terms in the form n times log of n plus n times log of 1 plus xi divided by n and then the last term is minus xi plus n. And then implying the product formula of logarithm we can write it is n times inside the bracket n log of n plus log of 1 plus xi divided by n and obviously then the last term is minus xi plus n and removing the brackets we can put it into this one form. Now let us expand the logarithm in the second part of equation 3 in Taylor series that is we can write log of 1 plus xi divided by n equals that uh, expression which is in fact the Taylor series expansion. Since xi is small enough therefore I have approximated this uh, the series on the right to the first two terms and have dropped the higher term. Substituting this value in equation 3 it can be expressed in the form of this one equation where I have just substituted the above result for the log of 1 plus xi divided by n. And removing the bracket we can express the result as n times log of n plus xi minus half xi squared divided by n minus xi plus n. And removing the brackets in the last terms the two xi cancel out from the relation and it can be rewritten into this form. Now with the help of equation 4 we can write equation 2 into this approximate form where I have written the approximation because we made approximation in the Taylor expansion of the, uh, of the logarithm term. And taking the coefficient of the first term to the power we can write the result as log n raised to the power n minus n minus half xi square divided by n. Now exponentiating this whole equation we can write gn of x equal exponent of log raised of log of n raised to the power n minus n minus half xi square n since the term inside the 
Argument of the exponents are number, they commute with each other. Therefore, we can split that into three different exponents. And then canceling the log of the first term with exponent, we can finally write the equation in the form n of n exponent minus n and to exponent minus half xi squared divided by n. Now look at the form of the exponents. Both are decreasing with increasing value of n. However, one exponent is sharply decreasing and the other exponent becomes slower and slower with increasing value of n. On the other hand, the second exponent is 1 when xi equal to 0 and therefore g n x for a given value for a given value of n is maximum and we see that the second integral become fixed and becomes and the whole integral become minimum for xi equals square root n now changing the integration variable from x to xi that is x equal xi plus n and dx equal to d xi and accordingly changing the uh, limits of the integral and substituting equation 5 into equation 1 the integral becomes n factorial equals the limit of the integral from minus n to n and the integral is the value of equation 5. Since n power n and exponent minus n both are independent of the parameter xi therefore we can take both these terms to the left of the integral and can express the equation into this one form also note that in this equation i have changed the limit from minus n to minus infinity this change is in fact permissible based on the argument that xi is very very small now this integral is in fact Gaussian integral whose solution is given by square root 2 pi n. Setting this value of the integral in equation 6, the result can be put into n factorial equals n raised to the power n exponent of minus n times square root 2 pi n. Now taking logarithm of equation 7 and then applying the product formula of logarithm, we can write equation 7 log of n raised to the power n times exponent minus n times square root 2 pi n. And applying the product formula of logarithm, this result can be write into three different parts like log of n raised to the power n log of plus log of exponent minus n and plus log of the uh, square root of 2 pi n. This can further be simplified by taking the exponents of the first two terms to coefficient and implying log of e equals 1 and the final result can be put into this form. Equation 8 is called Stirling's three term approximation for n very large the final term in this equation can be ignored and the final form can be written into log of n factorial equals n times log of n minus n equation 9 is called sterling approximation now let us evaluate the numerical value of these approximation and compare them with equal with actual result. You see that the actual result is currently approximated by the approximation. This little difference further decreases with increasing value of n.